everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Heading to Boulevardia on June 20th or 21st, be sure to check out the Greenville and Family Event Area under the 12th Street Bridge. KC Green will be hosting a fun booth with games and activities that demonstrate the city's green initiatives. So grab your dad for a Father's Day family event full of fun and hopefully a little learning, too. The Kansas City Friends of Alvin Ailey will present Festival on the Vine June 18th through the 20th at the Gem Theater in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District. The festival showcases a variety of dance performances along with pre-performance discussions and master classes. For more information, visit kcfaa.org. The city is celebrating five years of using data to guide performance management by curating a special art exhibit. The opening night reception at the Arts KC Gallery Space was held on the June 1st Friday evening in the Crossroads. Our exhibit, called The Art of Data, represents a unique fusion of both artistic expression and the actual statistical data used on a daily basis by various city departments. Uh, the Art of Data is an interesting and creative project that ties together uh, several city projects and priorities. First of all, uh, it's a way that the city can actually walk the walk of being engaged with the arts and, and being involved in supporting our creative economy and community. Uh, we actually issued a call for artists uh, for a gallery show. And that uh, is an original and unique way to engage the community of creatives here. Uh, and I don't know of other cities who simply do that, but we are. We're always going to be trendsetters. The Art of Data exhibit will be on display at the Arts KC Gallery Space at 106 Southwest Boulevard through June 24th. Be sure to stop by and experience the Art of Data. Many thanks to our sponsors, Socrata and the ETC Institute. Now let's find out what's happening with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation. As summer finally arrives, residents are invited to celebrate with Parks and Rec. We have many fun events planned that the whole family will enjoy. Kansas City Parks and Recreation was recently announced as one of four Class 1 finalists for the 2015 National Gold Medal Awards for Excellence in Park and Recreation Management. The Gold Medal Award honors communities that demonstrate excellence in long-range planning, resource management, and agency recognition. The winner will be announced at the National Recreation and Park Association's conference in September. Bring your tattered and faded flags to the Missouri-Korean War Veterans Memorial on June 14th to be officially and respectfully retired. The annual Flag Day celebration begins at 1.30 p.m. in Washington Square Park at Pershing and Maine. This year's keynote speaker is retired Rear Admiral J. Stanton Thompson, United States Navy. The event is free and open to everyone. Come out to South Moreland Park for the 23rd annual Heart of America Shakespeare Festival. This free festival will take place from June 16th to July 5th and features King Lear, a great Shakespearean tragedy. Gates open at 6 p.m. with pre-show activities prior to the 8 p.m. curtain. Admission continues to be free, but donations are gratefully accepted. For more information, visit kcshakes.org. Celebrate National Teddy Bear Picnic Day on July 10th with a party on the front lawn of the Kansas City Museum. Pack a picnic, bring a blanket, and grab your favorite teddy bear for an afternoon of fun with music, games, crafts, and more. The picnic is presented by Healthcare USA. Registration is limited. Sign up today at caseyparks.org. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit caseyparks.org and click on the calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513. 7500. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples, Fire Marshal for the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. Warm weather means more time outside grilling, enjoying time around the fire pit, and relaxing outdoors. But these activities present fire safety concerns as well. Please remember the charcoal or gas grills and fire pits 
should always be located safe distances from buildings, wooden decks, and other combustibles. Never store propane indoors. On gas grills, be sure to check the propane gas hose connection to make sure it's tight and that the hoses do not leak. If you think you have a leak, put some soapy water on it and look for bubbles. That's an indication the hose needs replaced. When done grilling or using your fire pit, be sure the fire is properly extinguished. Never put hot coals in a trash can or other container. Use gasoline only for its intended purpose as a motor fuel. Handle gasoline outdoors only. For more information, go to kcmo.gov and search for FYI KC. I'm Floyd Peoples, Fire Marshal for the Kansas City Fire Department, wishing you a happy, fun, and safe summer. My, my brother grew up playing baseball, so Columbia was like a second home for us as uh, children when we would come for the Show Me State Games, so I'm really excited to be here announcing um, and introducing the Show Me State Games Associate Director, Dave Fox. He's going to come up and have a few words, and we'll continue with this program. And distinguished guests, Mr. McKinnon, we appreciate everything. Parks and Rec and several people have been out here today. Thank you so much for uh, having us today. Again, Michelle, thank you. We appreciate that. Former kickball star, I might add. <laughs> Special guest, a former national athlete of the year, Taylina Oe, is with us today. Good to see you, Taylina. And then you heard some remarks from somebody, quite honestly, who is uh, uh, with the corporation that sponsors this event, Shelter Insurance, has been with us for a long time. Anna Hargis will be with us today again. Anna, thank you so much. This is our third leg of 10 across the great state of Missouri. Uh, we've been in Joplin, we've been in Springfield. Certainly we have our, uh, our run today here in Kansas City. We'll be in St. Joe tomorrow. In the very near future, we'll be in Hannibal, Cape Girardeau, St. Louis, St. Charles, Jefferson City, and Missouri. The purpose of these is to create enthusiasm. We are uh, just about two months away from our first of three weekends of the Show Me State Games and uh, trying to unify the state of Missouri. The Games is celebrating its 31st year of existence and its mission is quite simply to provide all Missourians, regardless of age or ability, the opportunity to perform in an activity of health, fitness, family, and fun. For several years now, something to brag about, we have been and continue to be the largest state games in the United States of America, so give yourselves a round of applause for participating in that. Um, I'm here along with my colleague Stacy Smith. We normally have a cadre of runners from Shelter, from our claims, from our customer service base here in Kansas City. But many of you know that the storms came through just a few weeks ago, and they are all out working overtime and weekends trying to get all those claims handled for our customers. So unfortunately, we had several that could not be here with us today. Uh, but Stacy and I are here. We're going to be uh, taking pictures and helping spread the word, the good word about the games. Thank you again to Shelter Insurance, the Show Me Games for making this all possible and choosing Kansas City as one of your locations to uh, begin the games here in the state of Missouri. And uh, we welcome these partnerships and glad to work with uh, the Show Me Games and other organizations to uh, showcase our parks, showcase our city. And today we're going to showcase some of the Country Club Plaza. So beautiful day, sun's out, a little cool, a little breezy. But anyway, we got away from the rain and we're enjoying another great day here in Mill Creek Park. Thank you. This is a very, very impressive young lady. I want you to tell everybody what sports you play. I play swimming and gymnastics. Tell everybody how many medals you have in swimming alone. Um, around 70. Seven. And how old are you? 12 years old. With 70 medals. And you have how many medals total when you include the gymnastics ones? 101. Okay. Thank you for being here and let the games begin.
The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department is working to create a more peaceful world through its police athletic league. Peace Players International brought its teaching philosophy to PAL to show the kids who can play together can learn to live together. Peace Players International is a nonprofit organization that brings children together to play basketball from communities in conflict. It works year round in countries like Israel and the West Bank, Northern Ireland, Cyprus, and South Africa. Chief Program Officer Gunnar Hagstrom says it's more than just a game of basketball. So some of it is just around getting, getting kids in a room together. Um, so one of the first barriers to, to resolving conflict is, is around separation. So we use basketball as a medium, right? You can see behind me, like, Al is using a variety of sports. They create this awesome center that all these kids get to come to. So right, it gives them an opportunity to be in a safe place and interact with different people, interact with police officers, right? Which is kind of what the mission of PAL is about. Um, so, so one of the things is just different techniques to start getting kids to interact with each other. Um, a second piece is around just positive coaching, right? So we spent a lot of the past two days kind of talking about a, a framework and a mindset in how we work with our kids. So both around like how do we give, you know, constructive feedback and praise, right? But, but also like how do we design, you know, programming for success and a bunch of different things. So it's kind of, we, we talked a whole, uh, about a whole bunch of stuff over the past two days. We introduced them to the curriculum we use, which teaches, uh, which is what some of the stuff they're doing behind us. Uh, Right, which teaches the ideas of like conflict uh, and the, all the different elements through the game of basketball. So we spent time on that and just gave them a whole bunch of different stuff that, that they can uh, you know, experiment with. And if they like it, we're happy to, to do more with them. And if they don't, we're like, all right, cool. <laughs> PAL supervisor Sergeant Skip Cox says the night was a success. The kids from our PAL and to interact with uh, kids from the department and just kind of get them together and kind of play sports or do different activities. And really the goal, which they don't necessarily see, is that realizing that, hey, you know what, we're more alike than we are different. And so that's kind of the underlying current of everything. They plan to use many of the coaching skills taught by the organization with hopes of bridging the divide between KCPD and the community it serves. Really what I want is for the kids to be able to come here and have a safe place to, to play. Um, and to do whatever they want to do, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's gymnastics, whether it's education, um, we've got a computer lab down there. Whatever that is, we can provide for them a safe place, an avenue for them. Um, but building that relationships with the kids from a police standpoint, that's something that we don't get an opportunity to do most of the time out on the street. So this is a little bit slow, you know, more controlled environment sometimes to where we actually have that opportunity to build those relationships. And what's really nice about that is once we build that relationship with the kids, then we kind of work backwards and build the relationships with their parents. And so sometimes there's, you know, we talk about building a community. That's really the grassroots of it. We build, work with the kids, it goes into the families and then the whole community is involved. While the purpose of PAL and Peace Players International is to give young people the skills they need to improve their communities, members of KCPD also benefit. A PAL officer's got to go through the training, and what that does is it helps to, um, it offers the officers a different way to think about the kids. Um, so we think we know what's going on in their world, but the reality is that we don't. And so um, through this training, it really invites us to kind of think about it from their perspective, which then helps us to be better coaches, better mentors, um, and kind of really fulfill our role even to a better degree. So part of it is uh, um, right, helping to, the, the mission of PAL is around perception change as well, right? There's, there's other stuff involved in it. Um, so part of it is working with, with some of the officers and giving them kind of more concrete training that is sports specific in the mindset, um, right, as just kind of like piloting it, right? This is very much a taster to see, right? We work internationally, we haven't worked with uh, policing before, um, or police departments before, um, and so just kind of like testing it out. I mean larger scale, it's kind of in PAL's hands. Uh, right? They want to do more, we're happy to do more. If other organizations are, are interested, other PAL organizations are interested, I mean, we'd be happy to, to see how, right, if it actually if it actually works, right, what we're talking about today, like, we'd be happy to bring it out to other places. If you'd like to learn more about the PAL program, go to kcpal.org. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. 
The Public Improvement Advisories Committee, also called PIAC, invites residents to attend its upcoming neighborhood meetings. These meetings allow residents to request public improvements for their neighborhoods, which are funded through the city's capital budget. The meetings will be held Tuesday, June 16th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the World War I Museum at Liberty Memorial. Also Wednesday, June 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Hillcrest Community Center, 104th and Hillcrest Road. Monday, June 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Country Club Congregational Church at 205 West 65th Street. And Tuesday, June 30th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center, which is at 3700 Blue Parkway. Residents may also tell PIAC about needed public improvements by completing a request form. These forms will be available at those public hearings, or they can be obtained by calling the Capital Improvements Program at 816-513-2826. The deadline to submit a request is August 31st. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.